Let's dive into our super contest picks, and we'll roll through these fairly quickly. I'm going to give you my... So overall, overall, I'm 11-9 and nine overall. I went 3-2 and two last week. Chris, you are 10-8-2. and two. Had two pushes already, uh, and you were 3-2 and two as well last week. That, that Chargers game uh, helped you out. You would have been 2-3, and three and I would have been 4-1, and one, my friend. But instead, we both end up 3-2. and two. We both profit. That is all right with me. Game number one for me, I'm going to ride, like we already talked about, Rams minus two at the Seahawks. They seem to have the Seahawks number every single year, and now they have actually improved with uh, with their quarterback, Matt Stafford. And, and I think the Seahawks are the same Seahawks that we have seen for multiple years now. I, I expect the Rams to be able to cover this fairly easily on Thursday night. I got Eagles minus Panthers. Pan, uh, sorry, Eagles at Panthers. Panthers minus three and a half. Give me the Panthers. Uh, I, I, I think this Eagles team is bad. I think this Panthers team is really, really good. They ran into a, a, a probably a much better team in Dallas, but but now they're they're back to playing the dregs of the league, and and I think they kicked the crap out of them. I think so too. I think Jalen Hurts against that defense is a is a bit of a problem. Uh, game number two for me: Titans minus four at the Jags. They have kind of had the Jags number anyway over the years. It, this was a, a weird one for me to pick, but I think everybody is selling their Titan stock, and a lot of people are selling their Jag stock as well. This is just two teams that, that nobody really wants to bet on right now, but I think the Titans are going to be a little more fired up to come out and be able to get a win here against the Jags, and I think that they're going to do it in a, a big, big way. I think the Jags right now don't even care about football. They, they've been having all kind of meetings. They've been having to apologize for coach antics, all kind of mess. We talked about Urban Meyer to start the show. I, I I think the Titans are in a much better position right now, and they're only having to give four points. I, I, I'll, I'll take that all day. Titans minus four at Jacksonville. I'm taking the Lions plus seven and a half at the Vikings. Listen, these divisional games outside of some of the Packers games are all pretty close, okay? The, the Vikings and the Lions and the Bears aren't a whole lot different from one another. Now, the Lions are undoubtedly worse than the Jaguars or than the than the Vikings. Jeez, oh man, all these names going in my head. The problem is, is I don't think they're a touchdown and a half worse. I just don't. I, I think this game's going to be close, and I think the Lions are going to fight like hell. And it wouldn't surprise me if the Lions got a win. Because at some point in time, teams get wins in this league. We just saw it last week. Two bad teams that we thought would never get a win got wins. And so, yeah, I, give me all those points. They are, uh, by the way, the Lions are 4-6 and six against the spread, 3-7 and seven straight up in their last 10 against the Vikings. And they did cover the most recent win. They did not win it, but they, they lost at home 37-35 back in January. So, yeah, I... I can understand where you're coming from with that. Seven and a half feels like it, it might have just been too many points. Just too many points for a, a Vikings offense that can't seem to score. Do you know if Dalvin Cook's going to be back this week? Yeah, I think he's going to play. But like I said, I not, don't know. Not 100%. Like, yeah. I, I, would, I would imagine not. All right, game number three, Patriots minus 10 at the Texans. I don't need to say much about this. The Texans are are awful. You know, Davis Mills against a Bill Belichick defense. Like this is a recipe for disaster. I think Mac Jones and that offense found something last week for the Patriots, even in a loss against the Bucks. Uh, I think they're going to come out and and really, really put it on the Texans because they need to win in a big, big way. Pats are sitting what one and three right now. Uh, I I expect a big, big win on the road for the Patriots here. All right, so I'm not picking this game, but we didn't talk about it. I, I want to bring this up. Okay. Okay. People need to pay attention to the Patriots the rest of the season, all right? And it's not, I saw something special on Sunday night, all that bullshit. No, no, no. It's not. Bill Belichick, it has been wildly reported for decades now that Bill Belichick almost doesn't care about the first four weeks of the season because we, especially now that we have no preseason at all, he uses the first four weeks of the season as trying things. It's why he, he runs out formations that he doesn't normally run out. It's why Brandon Bolden got like 28 touches the other day uh, when, 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 when White went down. It, it's not that that's, he's just going to take White's place and he's going to get all white. He needed to know what he could put Brandon Bolden in and be successful later. So he put him in a bunch of different opportunities, and he didn't care about winning that game. Now, it's insane to say the most competitive person on the planet – 
Bill Belichick doesn't care about winning the game. No, he cares about winning championships. He knows that's all that matters. And he understands that nothing you do today will matter if you don't win on, you know, in January and February. And so I'm not picking this game. It's 10 point road dog. That's insane. I just don't do that. But I'm telling you, what you've seen the first four weeks is not what you will see the next eight weeks, nine weeks. It's just not. It's all going to be different. I, I can understand anyway, that. I can understand that. My next, my next pick. Number three that. for Sorry. you. All right. <laughs> number, number three for me. I'm trying to get my phone to open back up. Uh, I went on that long soliloquy. Hey, give me the Broncos going to the Steelers, catching a point. This defense is really, really good. And, I, I, A, I think if, if anybody scores 15 points in this game, they're going to probably win the game by double digits, okay? But I think this Broncos defense it can get after Big Ben more than I think the Steelers defense can get after either one of the quarterbacks who ever plays for the Broncos simply because those guys are more mobile. They can at least run away, throw the ball away, do things like that. Ben just doesn't do that, and he's just going to stand there like a statue, like a big oaf, and just get destroyed over and over and over again. And this secondary for Denver, I'll take the secondary over the Steelers secondary all day long. Juju Smith-Schuster on the sidelines. Listen, on the sidelines last week, this is not Aaron Rodgers looking at the tablet and throwing it down, that video, that gift that we've seen forever and ever and ever. This is, he sees, he's looking at something, He drops the tablet, and he puts two fists in his eyes and starts crying like a child, like my children cry with the two fists in the eyes, just rubbing their eyes. How anybody on earth would allow him to be in the locker room with them is just beyond me. I think that guy is just worthless. He's a cancer to the team. He's terrible. I wouldn't want him on my my football team. Denver's going to put him in a shoebox and and ship him out to sea. (laughs) Two fists in the eyes crying, Gary. When was the last time you've seen it? You've got a small child. You've got a son yeah, what, four years yeah. old? Uh, well, three. Three, uh, yeah. Three, three. When was the last time he put two fists in the eyes and rubbed them and cried like that? I will, I will tell you, it's, getting it's, up for school is, is very difficult. So we, we, we okay. had that recently. But, okay. but yes. But, but, this is, but this is something a child does. Yes. Yes. You're talking to a crybaby, okay? I'm a grown man that cries all the time, but I hadn't put my hands in my eyes and cried like that in he, he's, some, some decades, man. He's definitely something else. He's So stats on the season, he's had 27 targets, 15 receptions, only 129 yards, no touchdowns. Like he, I, I don't know what to make of, of him other than like he's he's washed. He's not, he's not the dude. So. No, he's not washed. He's a one-trick pony. If Ben could, if you had an offensive line that allowed Ben to stand there all day and Ben could throw the football deep, I do think that he could take the top off defenses because that's what he used to do. But now they try to utilize, because he's got speed, they try to utilize his speed and dumping the ball off, either their short screen passes, or so, but he can't get away from defenders anymore like that. He has to run in a straight line by them, but that takes four and a half seconds, and Ben ain't got four and a half seconds. And I don't know that Ben's got the arm to drop at 45 yards anymore. So that's the problem. It's not that he's washed. I think if he went to a team that had the ability to do those things, he would probably be unbelievable. But that doesn't take away from the fact that he is a damn baby. It it is a little crazy to think about. He, uh, He played at USC. He is only 24 years old. I mean, he was drafted in 2017. So the fact that I'm even having the discussion of whether or not he is washed is definitely not a a promising sign. Not good. Not good. Definitely not. Uh, Najee Harris actually has more receptions and more yards than uh, than he does. More more receiving touchdowns, etc. Which is not hard considering Juju has none. But uh, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, the, the he, Steelers. He, you, you, me, and him all have the same. The the Steelers only have four uh, receiving touchdowns on the season. So you know. Not a not great. I, I was I was with you on this. The only thing that scares me is the fact that the Broncos do not have any explosive. Uh, their their explosive offense is gone with Jerry Judy got a, and and Hamler out. Right. They they got a, they got a better kicker and 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 if you told me which secondary could take the ball to the house better, who would you put your money on? I, I, don't get me wrong. I, I, if I had to choose, 
Like, yeah, I would I would take Denver in this game, 100%. Yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, just based yeah. on everything, their offense is better than Pittsburgh's defense, and their defense is better and, than and Pittsburgh's let's, offense. Let's say, let's, say, let's say we get a 0-0 tie. I still win because I get a point. <laughs> that's that's a very good point. <laughs> All right, we still All got, right, two, we got, more got left. two more games. You got yeah. you got two more, right? Uh, yes, two more. Uh, I'm going to take the Cowboys minus seven at home against the Giants. Uh, I think that Giants game that we saw in New Orleans was more to do with New Orleans than it was with the Giants. Daniel Jones is not a good quarterback. I'm going to take the Cowboys minus seven here. I know it's a lot of points, but this Cowboys team looks ruthless right now. And they, I think they're going to have a ton of success passing on this Giants defense. So give me the Cowboys minus seven. Yep, we agree on that. We agree on that. That's that's one of my games as well. I'll give you my last game. Bills plus three at the Chiefs. I, listen, we faded the Chiefs forever, right? Yep. And, and, and it worked. It worked. They were like 12 and one against our uh, one and 12 against the spread of 13. Then they covered last weekend. Starting a new streak this week. <laughs> Betting against the Chiefs. Taking the Bills. I think the Bills win the game outright. I think they're a better football team, man. I that's actually my last game as well. <laughs> Boom. We have to finish I'm, this thing quick. Yes, yes, you are correct about that. No, I I'm fully on board with you. The Bills are playing like the uh, possibly the best team outside of the Cardinals. Uh maybe better than the Cardinals. That'd be a hell of a game right now, wouldn't it? But yep. that would that would certainly be my my pick here. I think the Bills are a better football team than the Chiefs, and I don't care that it's being played at Arrowhead. So give me give yep. me the Bills plus three. Anything else that we need to that we need to discuss? Nope, that's it. I gotta go. Well, that sounds good. I'll go ahead and let you get out of here, and then I'll <laughs> close the show, brother. See you guys. All right, that is going to wrap up Winning Cures Everything for the October sixth show. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.